When playing video games, no matter how good, there can always be that one level or section of the game that furiates players. In the first person shooter genre, some notable examples include Medal of Honor Allied Assault Sniper Town, Time Slayers 2 Robot Factory and Atomic Smasher, Doom's fourth episode Thy Flesh Consumed, Heretic Shadow of the Serpent Riders, All of Call of Duty World at War and Veteran, Most of Blood, and Half-Life 1 Zen. Granted, I actually think Half-Life 1 Zen is alright, and people mostly overreact about it. But I digress, those are usually levels brought up by critics. But there's one FPS level specifically that people can't help but hold a grudge on. It lives on with players that don't forget its name. It's called... The Library. There are only a handful of games out there where I've played them countless of times. Half-Life is the first thing that comes to mind, but Halo Combat Evolve is definitely up there. It's one of my favorite shooters of all time. The library is notorious to players who have played it. The level has led to rant, frustration, and rage. It's as if people have this personal vendetta against it, with some even claiming that it is the worst video game level in history? Almost to a point where the Halo community seems to remember the library more than other awful Halo levels such as Quarantine Zone, Grave Mine, Two Betrayals, or Cortana. Despite that, I still don't consider the library to be a bad level. Well, at least my mom is still subscribed to the channel. Oh, nope. Uh, never mind. She, um, she left too. In my Halo CE review, I mentioned how I didn't really hate the library and didn't further examine why. One of my biggest regrets of that video was not going more in depth as to why I felt that way. Along with me including a small diss on Under the Mayo and DJ Pete's Cobbler. I really enjoy that content. This was because I had a deadline and wanted to finish the video as soon as possible for Halo Infinite's release date. If I had to make a list of my ranking, this is about where I would put the library. Pretty low on the list, yet I think it's not bad. So why the hate from fans then? Well before we answer that question, we need some background information. In Halo CE, you had just finished 343 Guilty Spark, one of the best levels of the game. What made it good was the build up and the twist of the flood. Up till this point in the game, we were just fighting aliens and then space zombies come in out of nowhere. 343 Guilty Spark finds Chief and tells him how they need to stop the Flood by using the Index to activate the Halo Ring. 343 then teleports Chief to the library and we battle the Flood for the whole level. Alright, sounds pretty simple enough. Right? Well, to most people, not so much. I've mainly noticed a couple of key issues from people. The repetitive level design, the difficulty, and it being filler in the overall story. So that's a total of three issues I was able to count. Maybe someone on the internet has another reason as to why they don't like the library, but these are just the arguments made by most people that I could find. Let's tackle the first one, the level design. On the development side of things, the library was solely designed by Tyson Green. There were a lot of ideas for the level, with most of them being cut due to limitations to the engine and the time crunch Bungie went through. In every mission, the environments are mostly varied, and you're not always doing the same thing, whether this was the setting or what you were doing during gameplay. The library does try this, even if you run through copied and paste areas. The closest comparison that comes to mind is Assault in the Control Room, where Bungie reused the same assets and is twice as long. I think this is where most players started to get really annoyed with the level design, sort of like a final breaking point. Speaking of which, this is one of the shortest missions in the game. In all my playthroughs, this level clocked in about 26 or somewhere around 30-ish minutes. I played on Heroic and Legendary for the gameplay footage. Though, this may be different for a first time playthrough. It can feel longer than how it actually is, and some players could get lost. Personally, I don't know how. It's running down a straight hallway and following Guilty Spark. Sometimes Guilty Spark does this. This is not the correct direction. If you do not follow me, you may become lost. Despite the short length, it doesn't change the fact that the level is, well, visually boring. Now this is just personal taste, I like how the level is dark, it makes the flood feel more terrifying, gives off this horror vibe Bungie was going for. The Forerunner architect gives off this cold and ancient look to them, it's a style that feels unique and interesting. I wish I could say the same thing for some other Halo games. <laughs> now I can't believe I'm going to say this, but Halo CE Anniversary actually did a decent job with some of these problems. I know, I know, I have positive things to say about Anniversary, I know, I know. What Saber Interactive and 343 changed about the level with the colors on each floor to give off a sense of progression. They also added arrows on the ground to tell the player where to go. It's kind of surprising Bungie didn't think of this since they really loved using them in Assault in the Control Room. 
However, while the color idea sounds like an interesting proposal, the game is still too goddamn bright. Like, what the hell is this 343? It ruins the intended purpose and theme. The library is supposed to feel dark and cold. Not this. Jesus Christ, that is bright. But what about the second part, the difficulty? For my skills and experience, this is probably one of the easiest levels in Combat Evolved. Some notable moments that I would consider difficult are the beginning areas where I'm trying to get my bearings sorted out. I used to think this segment here was pretty tough, but I actually kind of like it now and it isn't that hard for me, but uh, this might be a different story for some other players. The final part is a little bit tricky to get to since there's a lot of flood and um... Oh. Those are all my complaints. Mostly. All you need is a shotgun, run forward, and you're pretty much good to go. Rocket Floods make their first appearance here, and even I can agree that, um... Yeah, they're terrible enemies. There's no time to react, they blend in with the other Flood, and there's no unique cues to warn the player. Luckily, they are mostly far enough away to avoid, and there aren't that many of them. The worst case scenario for a new player is that they get thrown off by it, die, and then load back to kill them. What about other enemies? Infectors aren't too much of an issue. Carriers can explode, but if you're skilled enough, you can get a boost out of them. And then there are the common flood. The problem is that the flood doesn't stop coming. So keep going. The whole point of the library is this overwhelming force that doesn't stop. That is what I like about it. You are always on the move. Speed is of the essence. So is it difficult? No, not really. At least for me it isn't, since I have a lot of experience with Halo. But for a first time playthrough, this could be a much different story. I've read some ideas from people that there should have oh, been a couple of marines with you, and the Covenant should have been there as well. Like, dude, what? The final argument isn't as common as the last two, but I have seen it here and there. Is the library important to the plot? Um... Yes? I think the library is a very crucial chapter in the story. We get bits of lore about the Forerunners possibly being ancient humanity, the Index, and we learn about the Flood themselves. Hustling. you have such ineffective weapons to combat the Flood, despite the containment protocols. Okay, maybe that part is only cool for Halo Lord nerds out there, and it can be hard to hear when you're too busy dealing with the Flood. But having a chapter with Guilty Spark makes the player trust him, and even his Sentinels help us out in the level. It makes that twist in two betrayals just a little bit more impactful. Not only that, but just adding other enemies to the level wouldn't work. This is supposed to build up the Flood, showing how much of a threat they are. You are outnumbered and outgunned. You have to strategize how to deal with this horde. After all, they are called the Flood, consuming everything in their path in large numbers. Is there any way to improve the library? I looked at several different Halo C overhauls to see what modders have done for the level. In Combat Revolved, everything is red. I guess it gives off a different and hellish experience? This mod barely gives you any ammo. I found myself running low every second along the way. So much so that I kept dying over and over and decided to switch from heroic to normal. Yeah, not looking good so far. Then the Covenant is on your side for like, no reason. I would conjecture that the other species currently on the installation is responsible for releasing the flood. They seem most persistent in their attempts to access restricted areas. Oh yeah, you mean these guys? But then they are not on your side anymore? What is happening? Combat Evolve Anniversary Unlock makes only minor adjustments and changes to the base game. For the library, the only change that was made is that all the doors are open. Without having to wait for Guilty Spark, this is actually kind of fun. I'm just running through this level with no one stopping me. Although something small, I think this improved the library, which is a simple and easy fix. Project Spark is a cut content restoration mod that tries to add things from the early days of Halo CE's development. They add in the cursed Randy Pittsburgh flamethrower, and if Bungie ever did keep it in the game, this would have been a perfect place to introduce it. However, this flamethrower doesn't do as good as a job as you think it would. It's a neat idea, but not executed well. The Super Campaign is... one of those Halo mods. The ones that add in a bunch of random shit for no reason with no care on how this will affect the game. Weapons that feel out of place, the Flood are even more overpowered in this, and there are two white Spartans that never die, and... speaking text-to-speech? Shooting. Firing. Shooting. 
The Covenant are also on this level for no reason, and it just sucks. Like, can someone explain to me what the hell is happening here? After a while, I just gave up and didn't even finish it. Brutality Evolved didn't change or fix anything with the library, other than how it is more satisfying to kill the Flood. I was kind of disappointed with Brutality Evolved, expecting something like Brutal Doom. All it does is just add in jibbing and some new weapons. I would love to see more from this mod, maybe dismembering limbs or body damage for NPCs. Also, the new SMG is really goddamn loud. Infinite Evolve starts strong by starting with the flamethrower and shotgun. Yes! The mod tries borrowing ideas from Halo Infinite and tries to stick with it. The environment is foggy and slowly being consumed by the flood. This is a welcome change to me and I appreciate it. There's even a ghost here and that was just a breath of fresh air. But the Covenant are also here too, and it's just not that fun. People say that Bungie should have added Covenant and Marines in the library, when that just wasn't the point of the level. There is no cover or arenas to fight intelligent enemies in, it just wasn't designed with them in mind. In an ironic sense, a lot of these changes for the library by fans made me kinda hate it. Adding stuff without any rhyme or reason just makes it not enjoyable. Either that or I've been playing the level too much for this video. And maybe it's just a personal thing, maybe some people actually do enjoy some of these changes. But I wish there was a way that we could grab all the things that worked and throw away all the things that didn't. Well, I have one more mod to talk about. Ruby's Rebalance mod is just incredible. The mod tries to be as faithful and accurate to the lore and the game as possible. In the library, the flamethrower does a ton of damage. The new flood variants aren't annoying and each new floor is more damaged than the last one to make it more varied. Also, being lost can actually reward you in this. Like, seriously, this is the only mod that I actually wanted to go and explore. In the original, these areas served no purpose, there was nothing in them. But in Ruby's Rebalance mod, there actually is. If you get lost, you might find a teleport that leads you back into the right track, active camo, or a vehicle that you can just straight up drive. Holy crap, this level isn't just okay at best. This level is fucking awesome now! I feel like if this is what we got instead, people would have been way more forgiving of the library. So Rubia Blue, if you're watching this video by any chance, pat yourself on the back for a job well done. As for the other careers for the mods I played, um, sorry for the tough love. All the mods I played will be down in the description below. Before I close things off, Bungie themselves don't seem to regret the library. Jason Jones, Joe Staten, and Marty O'Donnell did a commentary for Halo C in 2007 and gave their small little thoughts on it. It's, uh, it's cool. I... I remember uh, liking this level a lot. I like the library. <laughs> I want to play it right now. Absolutely. Good work, Tyson. That was good stuff. Tyson has gotten a bad rap for this level. I love this level. I seriously do. Wow, look at the textures. They're like 4x4 four four Oh, jeez. We're done already. But yeah, that's the library. I just think it's fine. But what did you guys think of the library? Did you love it? Hate it? Did this video change your mind? Make sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe. I even have a Twitter if that's sort of your thing. Until next time.